Hi everyone, my name is Evan. Today I'm going to show you how you can build your own apps without writing any code using LifeRay's App Builder. We can find App Builder in the Applications menu. This makes sense since all apps created and the data associated with them are in the global scope. We can create two types of apps. Standard apps, which allow for a single form to input and update data, or workflow-powered apps, which are process-driven apps and expect data input from multiple stakeholders. To start with, we need to create an object. Remember, an object defines the information you want the application to collect and interact with. The way we add fields to the object is by creating form views. All the fields we add to our forms will become a part of the object. The form editor allows us to drag and drop different field types in order to create our form. Each field type provides many configuration options in order to meet any requirements. The form layout is, like the rest of LifeRay, based on Bootstrap's 12 column system. One thing to highlight about the field types, the select from list and single selection field types provide extra value by allowing you to create a table view that includes a filter based on their value. Like LifeRay forms, the form views also allow you to add form rules. Form rules allow you to define conditions which, upon them being met, will perform the following actions. Conditions can be based upon the fields that exist in the form or the user who is filling out the form. Actions allow you to show, enable, and require fields, or autofill or calculate field values. Form views can also be translated by selecting a different language from the language selector next to the title. Since our application will have multiple steps and multiple users providing data, we want to create multiple forms that will be used to input this data. We have just completed the employee self-review form. Now we will create the manager review and HR review forms. Notice how we see in the left panel all of our fields from the previous form. We can use these fields if we want, or add new fields. When we are removing a field from the form, we can choose to either remove it from the form only or remove it from the entire object. This would remove it from any other forms it had been a part of as well. We can also duplicate fields, which can at times be quicker than reconfiguring a field from scratch. Finally, let's create our last form for the HR review. Next, we can create a table view. When creating a table view, we have access to add any of the fields in our object to the table. I will simply add first name, last name, and department. Notice we also have a filters tab. This is where we can choose to filter our table based upon the values of either select from list or single selection field types. For instance, we could choose to only show entries for which engineering was selected as a department. Now that we have form views and a table view, we can create our app. If we were creating a standard application, we would add it from the Apps tab on this page. This type of application would only allow for a single form view and cannot include a workflow, which are both things we want. This will require a workflow-powered app. Workflow-powered apps can be created from the App section of App Builder. Let's create our new workflow-powered app. Workflow-powered apps follow a linear process to input data from multiple stakeholders in order to complete all fields of the app's object. We can define the steps in this process here. Let's start by configuring the first step. We will add a name and then define which object this app is based on. We then must choose the form view for this step and the table view that will be used for the entire app. We can define the actions for this step. Changing the name of this action will change the label of the submit button when the end user is completing this step. Transition 2 is currently disabled, but on steps 3 and higher, this will contain an additional option to return the entry to the previous step. Let's add our next step. We will label it Manager Review and set the assignee as Manager. The assignee limits who will be able to input data at this step. They will also be notified when entries enter this step. We are able to select the assignee from any regular roles that exist in the system. I have already created a manager and HR regular role. These roles do not have any permissions assigned to them. Under data and views, we already have a form view selected. 
By default, it has selected the form view we used in the first step and set it to read only. We can now choose any number of form views and choose if they are editable or read only. In our case, we want to include the manager form in an editable state. Then in actions, we can change the name of the button. Let's create our final step. We set the assignee to the HR role. We have both previous forms as read only, which makes it easy to review. And then we add in the final form as editable. At this step, we now have the ability to add an additional action if we choose. This secondary action would allow HR to transition the entry to the previous step if there was something that needed to be changed. Now we can deploy our application. We can deploy it as a widget that can be added to any page, as a standalone application with a direct link, or to the Applications or Site menu. It's important to note that if we have already saved our app before, then the deploy configurations will not take effect until we save our app again. If we have not saved our application previously, clicking Done will automatically save and deploy the app. Let's add it to the page and see how it works. Notice when we go to add it to the page that we have the option to add the full app. This will include the table and the form view, or we can add just the table or just the form. It provides a nice bit of flexibility for how we might choose to use our app. Looking for more on 7.3? Subscribe and hit the bell for notifications to stay tuned for more in-depth feature videos.